got one more. We got Sukunawa. Um, we'll do that next time. So until then, adios amigos. It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it's coming up next. The calendar may say autumn, but temperatures are still pretty sweltering here in North Florida. But the good news, the radar is clear. Still hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. And then for the visiting Falcons, a lot of people very eager to see the number eight pick in the draft, and that's B. John Robinson. And he's a guy I would have taken earlier in the draft. I go against the old adage, you don't take a running back in the first round. When you have one this skilled, this talented, who can run it and catch it and run your offense through him, you take him as the Falcons did. Here's the punter Bradley Pinion on to get us started. And off we go from Jacksonville. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence's so many tapped to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. Going to the air right away, Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 17 yards on the game's opening play and a quick first down. Love this look to start the ball game. They empty the backfield right away. And that's going to put some early stress on both their offensive line and on the secondary. And here they get the completion and a quick first down. A man coming off an 1100 yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring us to a third and four. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky. That play only picked up five yards. Now second and five. Now Lawrence. 
Open man is Kirk, complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. Here's Lawrence to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Lawrence. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Play action. It's Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 22-yard line. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. He'll connect on the out route with Ingram. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. Pass incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. How about this opening drive? Play number 12 now. This is third down. Here's Lawrence. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game, and nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner, and that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Etienne fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Once more, Etienne. Pushing for the end zone, but he's not going to get there. They stop him just shy of the goal line. Only a yard there, so it brings up fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. Fourth down, here's Lawrence. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert. 
and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And on the opening drive of the ball game, the defense comes up with a goal line stand. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense. And at the helm in his second season, Charles, it's Desmond Ritter. The Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four-game audition last season, and he did end their year with a pair of wins. Optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future. Now the first running back taken back in April, the former Longhorn, B. John Robinson. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him, 11 yards and a first down. Partner, I think that play echoed a short yardage run. I know they're backed against their own goal line, but when they stack the defensive line like that, if you find any type of a crease, you're up to the third level before you know it. Ritter on first and 10. That is incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was gonna get it. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13 yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Ritter throwing on third down. Ritter slides down, and he has enough for the first to run for it the decision a good one picking up the first getting 14 yards on the scramble certainly not a positive sign if you're the d coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game third down that's when the clamps are supposed to come out but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult on first and ten it's robinson get this one across the 35. 11 more on that one and another first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Ritter now looking to throw it this time. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 35. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Option left, and Ritter keeps it. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. Here's second and three. Ritter with it after the play fake. This pass is caught by London, and he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash, dropped at the one. A very solid gain of 27. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Robinson. 
will score. Touchdown Atlanta. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal. They've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind him, try to put together another drive. Yeah, a simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. That'll give them eight that time, and it'll be second in a couple. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and two. Lawrence will throw. Jones has it. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it, the benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. On second down, a run with ETN. And only a couple for him there as the tackle is made at the 42. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Lawrence on third down. Work in the middle of the field. Got a man complete, and he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Straight ahead, ETN. And he's got this down to the 35. Ten more there and another first down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville and it's the Jags with the football. As they've got it with a first and ten. ETN once more. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. ETN up the middle. 
fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. On third down, Lawrence. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. The kick by McManus is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. McManus to kick it away. And Patterson not going to return this. It'll come out to the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 43 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurdling through them. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Ritter now on second down. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. Call it a gain of six on the play. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. 
Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. And that's why he spent a first-round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to Robinson now on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second down, Ritter. This one left side caught by Patterson. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Two yards on the pickup there. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll hit the deck, but he did not get there. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least. If they pick a field goal, turns out to be the better call here. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. Koo knocks this one through the post. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And able to get this out to the 25. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he held on to it, but he probably shouldn't have as they get him behind the line. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. On first down, Lawrence. That would almost intercept it, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. 
That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Second and 10, here's Lawrence again. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender. Couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And almost, but not quite. Needed 10, he got nine. Fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. B. John Robinson leading the offense out for another drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. A Ritter's throw complete to Hollins. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. From the 22 now, here's second and three. Robinson, he'll try the left side. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. 58 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Off the play fake, it's Ritter. This one complete to Scott Miller. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Robinson up the middle. Oh, what a move. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Holding offense. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got some times where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. The Falcons on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and eight. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 44-yard line. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Our score, 10-3 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. First down, here's Ritter. And he will find his man on the outside. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 
Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw into the hands of Pitts here. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Ritter looking to throw on first and 10. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Ritter to throw it. The quick slant caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Mac Hollins. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons go up by two touchdowns. Now, that touchdown won't allow you to totally relax, but you can breathe a little easier now. Just increased their lead. Now, young way Koo for the extra point. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. That time, a nine-play drive. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that will bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now Lawrence to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, it's Lawrence. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 34-yard line. Now Lawrence is going to get his guys to go quickly. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Lawrence to throw. And that is incomplete. The 
passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 23. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Tackled there by Rayshon Jenkins. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a former Longhorn, Bijan Robinson, who was tough to stop in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Team three the score as we resume action for the second half on EA Sports. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Falcons offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball. And I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got his man, London, right side. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. On third down, Robinson. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. That's out quickly to London, and he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. 
And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it's just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. That is caught. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Now Ritter to throw on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Ritter. That's brought in downfield by London. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 21. A good pickup there, 26 yards. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Ritter. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. From the 21, it's second and 10. Ritter with it after the play fake. This pass is caught by London. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. Four catches now on this drive alone. They can't stop him. It's another first down. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Go and play action. Ritter. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Falcons take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Ku able to connect on the extra point and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. On first down, Lawrence. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, 
you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Again on second and 10, it's Lawrence. Throwing, completing, quick to Calvin Ridley. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And you start to think, if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. They go play action now. Lawrence. Man open here is Jones. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 23 yards, the final tally. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Caught on the right side by Jones. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Now, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. From the 33, here's second down and five. Again, it's Lawrence. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 23. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Lawrence. To the sideline and incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Lawrence. And oh, no, it's incomplete. Well, it's a touchdown if he holds on, but somehow took his eyes off of it, falls to the ground, and brings up fourth down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. The kick by McManus is good, and the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he returns this to the 22. Time to get another look at Drake London and the Falcons offense. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 22. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. 
Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second down and six now from the 26. Here's Ritter. Throw left side, there's London. Ritter and London team up there. First down, Atlanta. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On play action, here's Ritter. And a dump off here to Robinson. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. A give left side to Robinson. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Ritter to throw it. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. First and 10, it's Patterson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Ritter will set up to throw it. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 29-yard line. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. First down, here's Ritter. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. A second and 10, fourth coming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. Another throw coming up here for Ritter. That's going to be caught by Pitts. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A good pick up there, 26 yards. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Robinson, touchdown, Falcons. Well, fair to say they've got something here, this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time of the ball game. And Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot, but he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. Extra point by Koo, up and good. 
And they open the lead up now to 25. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. But we haven't exactly been treated to a nail biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. On second down, Etienne once more. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. A third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Looking downfield for Jones. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those. But the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Here's Logan Cook now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. So from the 37, here's a second down and nine. Back to throw, Ritter. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Ritter throwing on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The partner is still in the third quarter, but they've got this one well in hand and still airing it out with gusto and picking up some nice gains. And even in lopsided games like this, you don't really see starters get lifted or the foot come off the gas before the fourth quarter. No one wants to leave any doubt when they're playing well. They just want to continue the process. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 96 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. No surprise, Robinson is looking like one of the best running back prospects we've seen in a long time. He became the face of the Atlanta football team the second he was drafted, and he should be ripping off big runs for them for years to come. 
Looking to throw it here, Ritter. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. The Ritter back to throw. Throw over the middle, gonna be caught here by Pitts. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The offense on third down, as close to automatic as you can get. Nine out of 10. This will be third and six. A throw there, but that's gonna wind up incomplete. Well, they're up comfortably here, Charles, but that lead certainly not dissuading them from pressing the envelope late. I mean, if anything, with these passes, it's like they're getting more aggressive to try to drive the ball downfield. And that will certainly lend itself to some post-game questions for that coach, and maybe you and I should attend that press conference to see what he has to say, because someone's gonna ask him why he continued to push it. My guess, he didn't like how some of the snaps were run earlier. He wanted to use that as a chance to clean things up, but he certainly will have some explaining to do. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. To return, here's Agnew, fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here, right at the 30-yard line. Jaguars offense ready to set up shop here again. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Lawrence on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him but the tight end drag route definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down and that's going to be incomplete too tough to hold on to that one in second down and defensively you look at the numbers another incomplete pass that we just saw and they're under 200 yards passing for the game so they've done their job on that side of the ball yeah recently i was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200 yard game 
and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credits. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. It's a big play for the Jaguars. And even 50 yards. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Bigsby is in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Just power football there, down near the goal line. Give it to him, he's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point from McManus is good. And that'll cut the lead back down to 21. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They built up that lead at intermission. And they're just continuing to pour it on right now, aren't they? Locked into a really good groove right now. I don't know if it's just the play calling. I know the execution is really, really sharp right now. And all the playmakers are doing exactly what you expect. They're making plays. And right now, defense has no answer and no chance of catching up. Yeah, they're just looking to turn anywhere for a stop defensively. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 108 yards rushing for him now, as he has been tremendous all day long. As many games as the two of us do, I would hope that one day we'll be able to solve this riddle. Why is it on a hot day that one team has more trouble with the heat than another? And especially when you can't stop a guy running the ball. You know it's September in the booth, though, when you and I have both removed our coats, and those <laughs> were gone in the first quarter. They were gone in the first quarter, and what we're watching now is a defense mentally giving in and sagging a little bit because they haven't been able to stop him. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one, a first down pickup of eight. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, oh, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Robinson with another carry. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. 
Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Got a man, it's London. And the tackle going to be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Well, there's a nice move by Robinson. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 13, and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one. Brandon, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. On the give, here's Robinson. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Ritter now. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 12-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, take, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Got London on the slant. Touchdown! Desmond Ritter on target to Drake London. And the Falcons up the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. So still throwing here in the fourth quarter with a pretty sizable lead. And now that lead even more sizable. And if nothing else here, CD, a chance to pile on some stats before this one wraps up. And he did just that. Brandon Convention tells us it's time for them to get off the gas a little bit, right? But you and I both know the receivers don't want them to because, as you noted, this is their chance to pile on the stats. If they got their way, they try to get every single spot in the depth chart points before this game is over. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Looking downfield for Jones. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Now a second and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. 
completes it to Evan Ingram. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants them to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late points. He wants his lead to stay right where it is. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. On play action, Lawrence. That is caught. And he will be taken down, but a big play there as it comes just as we reach the two-minute warning. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Troy Anderson applying the pressure and picking up the sack. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack. Just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Here's Lawrence. Quick hitter here, it's complete. They give him a dozen on the pitch and catch, but now they're up against a third and goal. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. And this is caught. Well, they get one back, picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. No surprise there, third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. McManus' point after is good, and that'll cut the lead back down to 21. So it would no doubt be a miracle comeback from here, but let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And a good job here by the foul. And now a fumble. The ball's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expects... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Option play, here's Robinson. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. 
It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. Here now, second and four. A give to Robinson on the option. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. The Charles, a lot of happy faces.